G'day, g'day, g'day. G'day. How you going? <laughs> Look guys, something we're doing today is very out of the ordinary for On Point. Um, we're not on the beaches today. We, we are not on the boat today. And what else is peculiar is we have a bloody good idea on where we're going. Yeah, that's a, um, that, that's a first. That's a first. We're heading up to Moore River today, guys. What we've done is we've got a couple of special little combos from Elvi that we're gonna go throw around in some hopefully quite shallow water. We're gonna walk around right up river at Moore River and see if we can find some rim holding, eh, Scott? Yes, yes, it'll be very exciting using these new little reels and stuff. They certainly look good. Um, they're cheap to buy. They're just a nice little combo, I suppose, but I think where they're gonna stand out is being quite short in the rod, they're gonna be um, really easy to use around some of the tight snags. Very versatile. They are versatile. So guys, we'll just uh, keep trekking up up the highway here and we'll, we should be there pretty shortly, but with the power of technology, you guys are gonna be there sooner than us. That sucks. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you on the water. See you later. Right guys, so here we are. And um, here are the little combos we were talking about. They're a tiny little 40, 45 odd size um, reel. Two kilo on mine, three kilo on Scott's main line. Um, nice little six foot rods. And what we've got here is we've just got a really standard brim rig. So we're running a very small swivel at the top here down to a really small ball sinker just to get that bait down and then a, a small little size two or four bait holder hook. Now the reason we're going to be using the sinker this morning is we have got a bit of flow um, on this river so we do need to get the baits down a little bit to the brim. If we can find nice pockets, Scott, what do you reckon we get rid of the sinker? Oh, yeah, maybe. I reckon see how things go anyway. But definitely a sinker is probably the right decision at the moment. It is indeed. So guys, throughout this video, We'll probably get around to showing you exactly how to use these little reels because when it comes to these reels here, they're absolutely unbreakable. Perfect for the kids because they can dunk them, they can sand them, they can do whatever they want. And, they're and only, then they're only plastic as well, so they don't scratch. They never scratch. You know, <laughs> they're, they're not going to corrode. They're, they're just awesome, unbeatable reels. <laughs> and one thing else to notice, guys, made in Australia. So this tiny little reel that costs you under 60 bucks is made right here in Oz. But anyway, enough talking, let's get some prawns on the hook, float them down the river and see what we can catch. What do you reckon? Let's get to it. Get into it. I've just put my bait in right shallow here and you can see by my line that I'm getting a few, oh, there he is. So we're off. Get out of there. A nice little grunter. Now, these are spiky little buggers. They're not exactly the biggest fish in the world, but um, let's see if I can... Come here. All right. Oh, they're just... You gotta be careful, because they're bloody spiky. But yeah, look. Little baby grunter there. First fish of the morning on the Elvi. <laughs> Elvies aren't just for surf fishing. They're much more than that. <laughs> oh, I gotta get into the next fish, see if there's something bigger in this little hole. Yep. You got him. <laughs> Look a little bit of pull. Actually pretty fun with these little rods, isn't it? It is. The first broom of the day. <laughs> there it is. Come here. That comes out. Probably a great spot to bring your kids. All right, so, good. These little kids combos. What a cracker, eh? Oi, oh, God, I'm on, I'm on. <laughs> this, hey, this feels... Feels better? Wow, this feels like a really nice fish. <laughs> How's that for action? Two out. 
No, the grunts are a brim, you reckon, Brennan? I'd say a brim, but it's really... Pulling quite nicely. Oh. Wow, this actually... Hey, this is a good fish. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this for a brim. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Check this out. Let's just, um, I'll, wash, I'll just wash him off a bit. And he flicked a bit of water on me, on me elbow, so we'll wash that at the same time. But look at this redfish. Look at that. That's like that, four times bigger than your bloody reel, <laughs> Brendan. That there is a bloody solid backwater brim. And he has absolutely taken that prawn right down. Honestly, we, I wasn't expecting to get a brim of this quality this far up. Like this is, <laughs> this has got me absolutely stoked. Honestly, we were looking for a brim to, to eat, but He's just too large. Like, I'm gonna get the hooks out of him. I'm gonna put him back in the water because he's just way too much of a magnificent, magnificent fish to keep. So let me get the hooks out and I'll show you the release. What a ripper. does not get any better than that. <laughs> oh, I dropped him again. As you can see with there though, what I've done with this Elby is I've switched it to the free spool mode, okay? So I'm on complete direct wind with the fish. What that means is that if a fish pulls, it can pull the line, because sometimes when the brim are a bit more finicky, that's what they need. But when I'm also bringing that fish in, if it's a really large fish, I can palm the spool and let it take drag. Whereas if I, if I put that into right hand mode like that, there's no free spool on this reel. And that's the versatile thing with this particular reel, is the fact that it can be used for a right hand, a free spool. And then if we click this button down to left hand control, all we do, is switch the reel straight over to left hand and then the left, left handed children or adults can have a go as well. So it really truly is a very, very versatile reel. But now let's get, let's get back into another prawn on there and uh, see if I can actually hook that fish that I just dropped. Yeah. Cool. Not a cracker of fish, it's trying to pull me into the reed. Spew, we missed the hook up of this one. And I actually think it might've got me just snagged. No, I think I've got him. Yeah, he's actually snagged me. Right. No, 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 we got it. Oh, oh I'm on two. Oh, oh. missed it. Now, this is another not a bad little fish for you, Scott. He's all right. Come here. They're actually nice size brim. Oh, come here. They got lots of spikies, don't they? But what a cracker of a fish. Brendan caught the monster one. This one's actually not too bad. Brendan's reel is about to go off, so. Yeah, oh, I got, I got one on two. <laughs> so I'll quickly grab the camera off you. You can bring in the fish. This one, no rec, no record breaker, but still a, still a fun little fish to be getting on these elvies. It's, <laughs> it's a matter of seconds, which is as soon as you put the um, the bait in the water, you're getting the fish. <laughs> Hold your fish up, Scott. <laughs> Definitely no stonker. <laughs> but guys, this is what it's all about. Fishing isn't necessarily about the biggest fish in the world. It's about bringing smiles. And when you're getting fish like this in such untouched water, honestly, it's undescribable. You've got to get out there and have a go at this. And bring your kids. Bring your kids. Now let's 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 get Scott's release on um on for you. You can see that fish has really taken it down. Well, he really wanted that hook, Scott. I need a pair of pliers, so. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Get him down here. There you guys. Another beautiful release. And I wet my shoes. I five for that, Scott. Taking the bait. <laughs> They're not the biggest of fish, 
No, he's set. No, no, I've lost him. I think. Yeah. Oh. Spat the hooks. Spat the hooks. Mate, these these fish just hook themselves then. <laughs> look at the <laughs> look at the rod with the bend once it starts pulling. How awesome is this? This is just so much fun. I wish you could actually see the fish coming out of the water. You can see the silveriness coming through the, the brown murky water. But um well, come here. There's another not half bad brim. Not as good as Brendan's one, but um I think I might be able to catch him later on. Oh, I'm gonna get him back in the water. And um we'll get on to the next one. Oh, there's a fish. Only a baby. Squeaker. A little, a little mini brim. Uh. There we go. Nicely hooked in the top of the lip there. Should be as simple as get that hook out like that. And then off he goes to terrorize some more bait fish. Oh, I need another prawn. <laughs> when you think you've lost a fish, but really sick, but you haven't. <laughs> it's just swimming, swimming towards you to say good day. A little tiny one. Oh, come here. See, little one. We're getting back in the water. So I've just started fishing this little section here. There's a lot of eddies hanging off the back of these logs. Oh, there he is, right there. Uh, no, no, got him out. This isn't a bad one. That's another good brim, that. Oh. That's actually not a bad little fish at all. And that one there, he'd be close on nudging 30 odd centimetres, a lovely healthy brim. You hungry, Scott? I can we measure him up, make sure he's sized, and if he is, I think that's, I think that's lunch sorted. Beautiful, all right, let's have a look. <laughs> This actually could be a bit. This isn't the biggest fish, but he just hit like a freight train and put up a bloody good account for himself. I mean, for a fish that would be barely legal, he did well. You're getting bites there too, Scott. No, I think I'm snagged. No, 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 no. My line is now flowing down the river. <laughs> well, there's another one done. Oh, and Scott's getting bites. Let's see if he gets it. Jeez, now you're putting the pressure on me. I am. <laughs> Cold. Waiting, waiting. It's still there. I might check my bait. I think you missed you missed your opportunity. I think I think I did. Right guys, so we're back at the car. We've got our brim here. It ended up measuring in at 31 centimeters, tip of the nose to tip of the tail, or 27 centimeters fork length for the guys who measure in fork. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare this brim up. Now there's a big, big thing around that brim don't taste great. But I'm gonna show you how simple it is to make a brim taste great. So first off, I'm grabbing my Cut six inch boning knife. The reason I'm using a boning knife is nice stiff blade to do the scaling, okay? So we're gonna scale this fish off. I'll turn him around here so the scales sort of go off the back of the car rather than into my car. And all we're doing is we're just running that blade up the fish, okay? Against the grain of the scale. So the scales go that way. We're bringing our knife up towards the head from the tail, okay? And we're just gonna continue to do that until we've got it all off. Now guys, whilst I'm doing this, just keep in mind the importance of catch care. When we caught this brim, we initially, we, we bled it straight away, okay? So let's just keep, keep it going with the scaling here. Alright, now make sure you get under his belly, give him a good belly scratch, just like your dog, he loves a belly scratch, except don't scratch your dog's belly with a knife, wouldn't be good. Alright, but yeah, keep keep working your way up, make sure you get them all off, because no one likes a mouthful of fluff 
or scales. Okay. All right, so we've got him nicely scaled there. Two seconds. Well, let's just grab some water. Here's some I prepared earlier. Okay. So, hang that off there. It's a bit awkward with um, two hands, so I'm gonna get Scott to reach behind from behind the camera and push the button for me. Go. Bloop. All right. Do that. And wash the old handies. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna catch you back here in two seconds, because I'm gonna run down the water quickly, wash my brim off, and I'm gonna clean this table, I'll catch you back when we're filleting. Hold on two seconds. Right guys, so now the brim's all nice and clean, we're gonna get to filleting it, okay? This will be a fairly quick process. We're just gonna come up there like that. So now that they're filleted, all we're gonna do here is just take out the main bone line, which is there. Just cut the V out. Look, honestly, make sure you got a better filleting surface than this. This is bloody horrible. But yeah, we take that little V out there. Feed that to the foxes. So there's no more bones in that fillet. Then we'll do the same with this one. There. And there. That's all done. So what, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna clean this back up again. And guys, a quick little tip, baby wipes, fantastic things. Get the fragrance free ones because you don't want your bloody fish tasting of, I don't know, lavender or aloe vera or, or butt smell. Um, and just use the fragrance free ones and they're a perfect clean up tool for this. So I'm gonna get all this cleaned up. We're gonna get the frying pan on and we'll uh, cook this up and show you how we go. So what we got guys, we just got the pan on the stove, real simple. Um, we're just gonna heat it up nicely. Now this is just a cheap $20 Campmaster stove from um, from old Kmart. They're cheap, the gas refills are cheap, and you know what, they're pretty good. They, they crack out a bit of heat. Um, just gonna wait for that to really heat up. And um, all we're gonna do with the brim fillets when I get them out, is we're just gonna give them a real light coating of meat spice, of all things meat spice. Some people would probably prefer something like all spice or something like that, but I actually find this meat spice to be quite good. Okay, so we want this pan to get really hot and we're gonna go skin side down first. And the reason we're gonna go skin side down first, we're gonna get it super crispy. Okay, uh, but yeah, this will just take a little bit to get this uh, pan going. It's starting to heat up nicely now, but we wanna make sure it's all good. So I'll catch you when we're putting the fillets on. Right guys, two brim fillets. Elephant ears. We're gonna put it on the pan now, it's nice and hot, and we should hear a sizzle. Listen to that. And you can see them contract nicely straight away. So as I said, just a bit of meat spice on them. We don't need much because honestly, these fillets are already gonna taste pretty good by themselves. So now we just cook them through. Now remember, fish doesn't take long, guys. Don't overcook your fish. You don't wanna be doing it, all right? Um, oh, a spatula. Don't forget your spatula. Heaps easier than burning your fingertips. But uh, yeah, cooking away nicely. We'll see you on the flip. Wait, wait, up here, up here. We're ready for the flip. Spatula straight under, look at that. And you can see there, that skin is looking good. Flip her over too. Oh, now they're fighting. Look, you, you, you just want to just get the spatula on them, keep the pressure down. This side is going to take a bit longer than the skin side, I know that. But you will get there, I promise. The only thing we forgot was the bloody bread. Um, there's still a couple little scales on there that will feed to Scott. Get off. See And, um... Yeah, once we're ready to rip it off, we'll um, see what she tastes like and give you a bit of an honest opinion on a freshwater more river brim. My spatula! Oh, he's got me a knife and fork, Brendan. Yeah, I just bought these. How's this? Four in one. At least my brother's looking after me. Deluxe. Oh, that's oh, yours. God. You like dropping stuff in this. Yeah, well, that, that, you? that's your one. 
Oh, Guys, good. one thing you're going to learn from On Point is we're big believers in Anko. <laughs> the cheapest, the cheapest stuff you can probably buy in terms of camp camp cutlery. And, and I mean, it's quality. Uh, have a look at this. I think this is like five bucks, Scott. But anyway, here's the fish. Let's get into it. Go on, Scott. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. That is beautiful stuff. I mean, it's not a fishy fish. Mm -mm. Nope. The spice just adds that little bit of kick because freshwater fish can be quite bland. Not that this is, but it doesn't smell. It's not rich. That no, goes down easy, doesn't it? Bloody good fish. So, I'm licking all my fingers. Mm. Is that good? Yeah. On that, guys. There's the first ever brim catch and You cook. left a little bit of skerrick here. Well, you can have it. I will. <laughs> There's our first ever brim catch and cook. Let us know if you liked it, guys, because if it's something you like seeing, you know, getting out in the middle of nowhere and sort of fishing these um, these skinnier waters for brim and, and showing you how we prepare them and so forth, then we can do it more often. I reckon that'd be bloody brilliant. But until that, then, guys, we're going to pack the car up and get back to Perth. Maybe. <laughs> there might be another fishing hole. Maybe there might be. <laughs> Alright guys, we're going to catch you on the next video. See you later. See ya.